So I'm going to show you a bit of Betfair trading here on the screen, um, anticipating and, and sort of predicting a move in this race at Ludlow on Betfair Exchange uh, using the Geeks Toy software, um, for those of you who are familiar with it. So at the top you can see Ludlow 125, uh, three mile, one furlong handicap chase. Uh, there's not a huge amount going on in the market right now, just realigning the ladders and sort of trying to size this affair up. Now, typically liquidity comes in the last four minutes proper. Um, so that's probably where we'll get involved. But this early point is the most important when it comes to anticipating the move and executing efficiently on it. So looking at the ladders, uh, the charts along the bottom there, there's not any huge clues at this point in time. You can see that the favourite's a little weak, uh, second's relatively weak, or re recently anyway. Third's attracted a little bit of money just recently, and then the fourth um, is also fairly weak. Now, showing you my screen from uh, the, the sort of off, off on the left on the second screen, this is still showing replays from the race before. So activity is not picked up in this market yet. Um, so we don't want to get involved because we don't want to be overexposed. We don't want to be taking unnecessary risk. And quite frankly, a lot can change right now. So we don't want to put ourselves in a vulnerable position. Now, this is one of the common problems that new traders do because they sort of attribute making money to the amount of time spent, which is not what trading is all about. And it's probably the main thing that might have attracted you to trading is the fact that you can make a lot of money quite quickly um, and at a lower risk. But so, so it doesn't make sense to get involved because of the time before the start um, is what I'm trying to say there. So that's not what we're going to do. We're not going to overexpose ourselves and then see things change. We want to let it play out. And as it does, we want to take a tactical move and position on what is actually happening in front of us, trading what we see, not what we kind of want to see um, or was hoping to see. So the main interest here right now is the third column from the left. That's my Bobby Dazzler. Uh, you can see that money that's come in just recently. So I'm monitoring the traded volume bars being the dark green bars that are coming in. Uh, the, so the dark green is against the light green, obviously in the, the traded volume column there, but the dark green is money that's come into the market in the last 30, 40 seconds. Now, the one issue we've got here is that this price is also trading around 6.0, so it's more beneficial to lay than it is to back. That doesn't mean the price won't come in, obviously, um, but that's just something to bear in mind in, in the back of your head. So getting closer down to the start, I'll bring... Um, my screen across from the second screen here now so you can see it because it's important to weigh up different um, sources of information now here we've got the racing post which is typically a bit lagging but it shows us some historical price information so you can see my bobby dazzler has come in from 11 to 2 to 9 to 2 so it's come in two different price changes with the bookies um, fairly recently and that's also being mirrored on the exchange so that's interesting as we start to build up the picture but at this point in time I'm certainly not laying in my colours to it um, at all uh, it depends largely on what happens with the first and second favourite in this race because the shorter the price in the marketplace the larger percentage of the overround um, that, that each of those two uh, shorter price favourites actually hold so they're, they're more influential is what i'm trying to say here but again we've just seen and i'm highlighting the cursor there we've just seen some money come into the market so i think that yep and again so that's our confirming signal just over just over four minutes from the start i'm going to place a couple of uh, i'm going to offer some money in the market there because it's good to offer not to just take the price willy-nilly we want to make sure we're getting value in that almost everything we do um, a lot of the time bar and missing the move i'm going to swap the ladders around here on the screen so you can see it a bit clearer I'm going to just change up mistakes. But my Bobby Dazzler that's now in the second column instead of the third column is showing signs that this price could come in some more. Highlighting that on the market overview so you can see it clearly. Um, we've got a very small position in there. I don't want to rush into things again. I don't want to overexpose myself, take unnecessary risk. Um, I want to trade what is unfolding in front of us. But at this point in time, the favourite looks pretty weak. The second favourite looks weak. The green line going out in the market overview. You can see from their Betfair charts along the bottom as well. Um, but the only one that seems to be attracting some level of support is my Bobby Dazzler. Now, how much support that develops into is another thing. But bearing in mind, we've seen the price go from 11 to 2 
to nine to two, and it's now trading around about nine to two on the exchange in front of us, being 5.5 in decimals, and it's now gone below that. Um, with that additional traded volume short term coming into the market, we know that the sentiment is on our side, which is why I'm not particularly bothered about this price bouncing back for a few ticks. Obviously, I'm going to manage the downside. Worst case, I'm, you know, I'm going to hedge if it goes out to sort of like 5.7 or 5.8. Um, but I believe relatively strongly at this point in time that the price is going to continue for at least another four or five ticks, which is why I've put a couple of exit positions early in the market there. You can see on the ladder, the pink 50s down below. So as the price comes to us, we are actually going to be at the bottom of the traded volume queues on the exchange. So we haven't got to wait on top of lots of other money that's in the marketplace to get our exit positions filled. Now, if I bring on my separate screen here, you'll see that this is the crucial point where they're just starting to show the build up to the race. My dog Bobby Dazzler was on the screen there and the horses are meandering around the start. So this is where we can see distinctively the traded volumes are actually speeding up. There's more money flowing into the market. You can see it from the, the bars along the top there. Um, it's quite clear. And we are on the right side of this move. And there it goes. Lovely. So it's moved down. It's started to factor out a bit of our um, open trading position so we can mitigate some of our risk, offset the green zone. Again, not going wild on the stakes. This is not a huge market, guys. This is like 150k, 160k is matched on the total race. So um, I don't want to overexpose myself. I can't be trading this for like 500s and thousands unless there's something with very extreme reason for that. Um, so you can see the trading volumes coming in there. We've offered our position in the market. One minute 30 until the start of the race now. This may continue and the, may, the race may go off a little bit late. So you could, you could argue that I'm exiting a little bit early here. But quite happy with that short move. Um, it was it was low risk. It was you know it was almost inevitable that that was going to happen, and so it's easy enough to um, close out our position. So currently on seven pound uh, seven pounds on seventeen pound fifty profit, win or lose across the entire Betfair market on this particular race. Horses are meandering around the start, so we don't want to be too active because we don't want to get caught in play. That would obviously turn our, our trading position into a gamble. That's not something that we're looking to do. Um, so just highlighting a Betfair chart on the bottom there. Pretty simple trade to understand, um, just needed to let it play out. So there it is. Check out the other videos on the channel because there's a few useful ones building up now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.